untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green stompy deck updated with additions from Phyrexia All Will Be One, which added a ton of great cards to the archetype, starting at 1 mana with a full set of Evolving Adaptive, a 1 mana 0 0 enters with an oil counter on it and gets plus 1 plus 1 for each one of those counters, and whenever a creature with a greater power or toughness enters a battlefield under our control, the Adaptive picks up another one of those counters, so much like a Pelt Collector, the Adaptive will keep growing over time and makes for a perfect one drop in this deck. Then at 3 mana we also have the full set of Bloated Contaminator, a 4-4 Trampler with Toxic 1, so it can maybe apply some poison damage to the opponent, but we're more interested in the undercosted Trampler, that when it deals combat damage to a player we get to proliferate, meaning we can add additional plus 1 counters to our creatures, additional oil counters to our adaptive, sometimes it even has both an oil counter and a plus 1 counter, in which case we get to double dip, as we can place plus 1 counters on our creatures with the Defiler of Vigor, we can keep our Spinoderm alive a little bit longer, by placing more oil counters on it, and we even have a Reckoner Bankbuster which enters with three charge counters on it to draw additional cards, so by proliferating we can also add additional charge counters to our Bankbuster. And then we also have the full set of the Evolved Spinoderm, as a 4 mana 5-5 five five enters with 4 oil counters on it, and it has Trample as long as it has 2 or fewer oil counters on it, but it starts out with Hexproof otherwise, and then at the beginning of our upkeep we have to remove one of those counters, so the first 2 turns it will have Hexproof, and then on the final 2 turns it will have Trample. And then as we've said we can potentially extend the lifetime of our Spinoderm using our Contaminator. And then we also have a one-off copy of Thrun, Breaker of Silence, a 5-5, five five, cannot be countered, so shines against the mono blue Haughty Jin decks, has Trample, and it also cannot be the target of non-green spells or abilities the opponent controls, so very difficult for the opponent to take out Thrun with spot removal, they'll typically need a sweeper effect, and as long as it's our turn, Thrun has indestructible, so makes for a great attacker no matter what board state. And then we also have two copies of Sword of Forge and Frontier, as kind of a nice curve topper in the late game, shines especially against red and green decks, thanks to the protection as well as plus two plus two, equips for two mana, kind of pricey to play and equip, but that's why it makes for a nice late game play. And then whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, we also get to exile the top two cards of our library, and we may play those cards this turn, as well as play an additional land this turn, so it can provide a ton of card advantage in the late game. And then we also have two copies of Tyvar Stand as our final new addition here. An instant that can be cast for just one mana if we cast it for x equals zero, in which case we still give our creature hexproof and indestructible until our turn, but if we have a lot of mana to spare we can also give plus x plus x, so it can be a nice finisher that the opponent may not be playing around, but can also help protect against removal and sweeper effects. And then the rest of our deck still has some of the usual suspects, pack leader at 1 mana, a 2-1 that can pick up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we cast a spell with mana value 4 or greater, can also enter with a counter if we already controlled an expensive permanent. Then at 2 mana we've got a full set of the beast caller, a 2-2 that picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter when we simply cast a creature spell, and when it dies we can move those counters onto our other creatures. We've got our bank buster as a source of card advantage, and also as a creature that can maybe dodge removal and sweeper effects, and that makes it easier to keep up the pressure, as well as providing card advantage in the late game, and Bankbuster also works very nicely alongside Kodama. The legendary 3-3 has reach and says modified creatures we control have trample. Modifications include equipment, so sword can modify our creatures, as well as counters, so oil counters, plus one counters, and even charge counters can count as modifications. So if we curve Bankbuster into a turn 3 Kodama, we can crew our Bankbuster, attack for 4, and most likely also connect, getting an additional land, which is a final ability on Kodama. Whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player, get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, so it can give us a nice mana boost, which we can then sink into drawing additional cards with Bankbuster, equipping our sword and getting that going, as well as casting some of our top end cards, which include three copies of Defiler of Vigor, a 6-6 Trampler with a very powerful ability, saying we can cast our green permanent spells using Phyrexy mana instead of one of their green mana symbols, which allows us to potentially play some of our one drops after playing Defiler of Vigor, just paying two life instead of a green mana, 
and then whenever we cast a green permanent spell, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. So that's one way we can generate immediate advantage from the Defiler, if we can follow it up with one of our one drops. And then in the late game, if we have more mana, it's also easier to play Defiler and another green permanent afterwards to immediately add plus one counters to the entire team, which can then also synergize very nicely with Contaminator, which can then proliferate, as well as Kodama giving the entire team Trample. And then our deck doesn't have much removal, but we do have two copies of Bushwhack, which can potentially let us fight an opposing creature, or we can cast it early if we're about to miss a land drop to search up an additional forest. And then our mana base, simply 18 forests, a Boseju for interaction, and four copies of Mishra's Foundry, also very important in the grindier matchups as a creature land that can keep up the pressure. So yeah, that's my take on a monogreen Stompy. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Turn 2 Beast Caller, turn 3 Kodama. Could lead to good things. Well, let's see what we're up against. Red Aggro, okay. Usually don't mind this matchup, even though our pack leaders are turned late. If they kill Beast Caller or keep up mana, I'll go with Contaminator instead of Kodama. But uh, if we're guaranteed to get an extra land, I think it's worth it. Still kind of a close call, since Contaminator is a pretty large blocker. Get in for three, next turn Spinoderm. But the upside here might be slightly higher. And then I'll still have to kill Kodama to get in with the etching. And then next turn we can double spell Pack Leader Spinoderm. Pack Leader picks up a counter. Opponent missing double red, so they probably have all spells in hand, potentially including mechanized warfare. I'll take three. They probably have a lightning strike. Would exile the creature, so Beast Caller doesn't get to move its counters. And then we should cast something now to grow Beast Caller. Opponent might remove it in response. Alright, there's a lightning strike. Still going for Spinoderm, I think. And then Kodama can attack for three. They won't be getting past our Spinoderm anytime soon. So just gotta close out the game in the meantime. Opponent goes digging. Finds another Warfare, still no second mountain. So they're struggling a bit, but yeah, that's the downside of playing too many Mishra's Foundries. And our opponent explodes, Feldon cannot block, and the Spinoderm is gonna run away with things. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is missing a third land, and even a fourth land if we're being realistic. So this might be just a tad too clunky, even though pack leader on one is nice. This seems a bit more balanced. And then it's between Tyvar Stand and Spinoderm, and I think I think we bottomed the Tyvar stand. Next turn can play a Foundry. On the off chance that they want to animate it next turn. Instead of playing Contaminator. Which can be the case if you want to play around counter spells, but I think we're just gonna jam 3 and 4 drop. Opponent does appear to be on control. Well. Activating Foundry is definitely a consideration here, but I'll tap out for Contaminator. Could have attacked first since we're not growing the pack leader here. Opponent with an Augury in response, so probably an Apparatus build. Don't think I want to play Spinoderm if our current creatures survive, since it's a great follow-up to a Sweeper, as they won't be able to target it with Spot Removal afterwards. And then, for now, we could animate Mishra's Foundry. And hope they don't have spot removal for it. Since a uh, depopulate is somewhat likely next turn. Okay, Ponon did have the Fateful Absence, unfortunately. At least we get a token in return. And then, can proliferate the extra poison. Alright, let's see if they have a depopulate on four. If not, probably play Spinoderm next turn. 
So Wandering Emperor is probably likely here, given that they didn't depopulate. So I guess step one, cast Spinoderm. If it gets countered, we know we can attack. If it doesn't, we'll have to reevaluate. Okay, so if we attack with both the Wandering Emperor Exile Contaminator, we essentially get in for one damage. Next turn they make a Samurai. Doesn't leave us in a great spot. If I pass, they make a Samurai. Next turn make another one. I think we'd rather attack into that board. Downside of not attacking is that if they don't have Emperor, they could just cast a Memory Deluge or some other card draw and pull ahead. We also put them on having Apparatus. Letting them untap with Apparatus is kind of bad. So maybe that's the reason to still attack here. They probably wouldn't be playing Augury if they didn't have Apparatus in the deck. And we don't want them to pull ahead with it. Okay, so just another Fateful Absence. Opponent takes three. And now Kodama can help search up a couple forests before maybe a Farewell comes down. And Jace can also shrink our pack leader down. Okay. I don't think I bother attacking Jace here. Um, instead, I should probably sack a clue, see if I draw something else I would prefer to play here. Maybe like a Bank Buster, which can dodge some sweepers, not all of them. Farewell, of course, still hits it. And then after drawing, I can still play Kodama. Upside of Kodama first and then sack clue is that we have fewer forests in the deck that we can draw. Okay, Defiler's not bad. And then I don't think we play Kodama to get an extra forest. We'll just keep up mana to crack a clue. Prepare for a farewell. Since our opponent needs a board wipe to deal with the Spinoderm pretty much. Or I guess next turn an instant speed removal spell once it loses Hexproof and gains Trample. Opponent draws with Jace instead of shrinking a creature down, so that further points towards a potential sweeper. Possible they don't have one and they're just desperately digging for one instead. And yeah, Silver Scrutiny for two. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, Spinoderma giving the control deck a headache here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand seems keepable at first glance, but... When we take a closer look, I don't have a 2-drop, no creature that will get a counter on turn 3 to get a land with Kodama, and double Kodama may or may not be useful. So I think we look for a slightly better curve out hand. This is not it, but I also don't want to go to 5, so we'll keep. And then hope to pick up a Kodama so Bankbuster gets to find a land. Spinoderm could be useful. Yeah, this mono green deck really needs to curve out. If it doesn't, it's just going to fall behind. Now, Beast Caller vs. Bank Buster is an interesting choice, especially given our opponent kept mana up. So Bank Buster could play around spot removal a bit better. Opponent with a Hurt Migration. Getting another basic, so it could be a multicolor domain deck, getting an island here. Okay, so still hoping for Kodama as our draw step. Busseju instead. Okay. Play Beast Caller and pass, and then next turn Spinoderm can also crew the Bank Buster. We'll see if Beast Caller survives. So far, so good. Now, of course, being a domain deck, we have to be aware of the uh, drag to the bottom, which will right now give minus four, minus four, I believe. So it wouldn't kill Spinoderm unless they play Mountain or Plains next turn. I think it's still worth it to play Spinoderm and get in with a Bank Buster. Opponent takes it. And then at the very least we can play Contaminator to crew Bank Buster attack. Right, it's going to be a Workshop Warchief instead. Opponent did have the plane, so a drag would have been minus 5, minus 5. 
And then now we want to kind of wait until we can beef up our creatures with Defiler Vigor to set up profitable attacks. And then for now, Contaminator versus another Spinoderm is an interesting question. I guess we'll go with a Contaminator. Not really interested in attacking here. I guess I can crew Bankbuster attack all out, still get a nice chunk of damage in. Alright, fine. This could be bad if our opponent did still have a Sweeper in hand and can now trade for Bankbuster, but they trade for Spinoderm. And gets a 4 4 token. So they're getting close to maybe casting an Atraxa next turn, which is going to be hard to beat. Green Sun's Twilight for X equals 5 as well. So that could also cheat a creature into play. But it looks like they only found a land. Okay, so big turn here. Is it Defiler or is it Thrun? Defiler has the highest upside, especially if we need to attack past an Atraxa somehow next turn. And then for now, I think still crew Bankbuster attack all out, get them as low as possible. Would have been great if we had another one drop in hand to play after Defiler to immediately add counters to the team. The opponent takes 9, falls to 2. And we'll see if we can attack past an Atraxa. Can be a Titan of Industry instead, also very good. Can destroy Bankbuster, make a Rhino. But uh, yeah, now it's time to grow our team with Defiler out. So we have five mana. These all get essentially a one mana discount. So I can play Beast Caller plus Thrun as the most efficient play here. And then Beast Caller first, so that can pick up more counters. And then attacking all out seems fine. Double Chum Blocks plus Trample for one opponent down to one. If they play a Sweeper, we still have Mishra's Foundry. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Get to level up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a nice curve out hand. One, two, three, four. Opponent on mono white or blue white soldiers. Ooh, adaptive is even better here. We'll actually pick up additional oil counters as we curve out. As opposed to Pack Leader, which only grows once we play Spinoderm. So opponent appears to be on Mono White. Thalia we don't care about. Okay, so off to a promising start. Hope to dodge a Brutal Cathar, which is one of the better cards they have in the matchup. Laid on Arms can also be very effective. Okay, Laid on Arms exiles Beast Caller. At least it cost them two mana. Now we have another interesting position here. We can go Beast Caller plus Pack Leader, or we can play Contaminator. If our opponent had a Brutal Cathar, they probably would have gone for it over Laid on Arms last turn, so they could have another Laid on Arms in hand, in which case Double Spelling seems slightly better. Sure. And the Adaptive already has a profitable attack, so we don't need an extra counter from Contaminator. And then Spinoderm grows Adaptive and Pack Leader and Beast Caller, so adds a counter to the entire team, essentially. Okay, Shield of Argive could be a problem. But Spinoderm blocks it quite well. And it's not like they will be able to remove it. Thalia and Frontliner attack, so can eat the Frontliner. And yeah, time for... Spinoderm. And then Beast Caller gets to attack at least. Next turn, Contaminator still grows the adaptive. And then 
What are we hoping to top deck? I guess our Defiler of Vigor would be great. Opponent had another laid on arms, as we suspected. And a Siege Veteran. Okay. So, the board might stall out a little bit here, as our opponent doesn't have a great attack, and opponent can set up some decent double blocks. But, uh, of course, we want to try and get in with the Spinoderm while it's still around. If I play Contaminator, grow Adaptive. Probably fine to attack with 4-4 uh, four, four and 5-5. Five, five. Although then, next turn, Shield of Argive has a decent attack, making a bunch of 1-1s one in the process. If they get a counter from Siege Veteran and plus one from Frontliner, up to a 5-6. Can at least still double block with Pack Leader Contaminator, hoping there's no top deck removal. And uh, yeah, opponent will be at a relatively low life total, so I think that's still fine. Opponent takes it, unsurprisingly. Okay. So a big draw step here. If they can remove Contaminator, we're in trouble. But nope, just uh, land, get back Frontliner. And we're definitely double blocking. So it's going to take a while for us to get past the 1-1s. One but the Spinoderm will gain Trample next turn, so that helps. Okay, Bushwhack was a good draw. So, think attack first, and then Bushwhack second main, since they're unlikely to block with a Siege Veteran here. And that way our creature doesn't have damage before attacking, making it easier for the opponent to maybe take something out. Probably gonna see a single block on the adaptive. Okay, opponent actually takes out the Spinoderm. And trades for Pack Leader. Pretty happy with that exchange. Opponent falls to one, and we can fight Thalia. So now we've got a 4-4 versus an empty board. Spelling Veteran's gonna have to chum block. And Kodama now gives our adaptive trample. So we get to trample over it for the win. GG's. Close one here against Mono White. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of this one? No 2-drop. And no third land, although going adaptive and entering three Kodama could still be good enough if adaptive gets in and we get to pick up an extra land, makes it easier to get to Spinoderm and Defiler. And a lot of our draws are either lands or two drops, admittedly. So I think it's worth the risk here of potentially missing on a third land. Turn one adaptive is our best play at the end of the day. Opponent black whites. Okay, so at least we'll be able to play Kodama or Sword on three. Looks like they have a cut down. Okay, that's too bad. So now, might prefer Sword over Kodama on three. Although Adaptive is another interesting twist. Yeah, because we're not guaranteed a fourth line for Spinoderm. So maybe it is Kodama after all. Although it kind of feels bad playing a creature without an immediate impact. Playing Adaptive also feels kind of weak, so maybe this sword. Hope to draw land for Spinoderm, and then we can suit that up while it has Hexproof. Alright, now I guess we can double spell Adaptive and Beast Caller. And then I think Adaptive first. Because next turn Kodama is going to grow both regardless. So I think I'm happier with two three threes. And pass it back. Opponent kills Beast Caller. Now 
and passes with four mana up, so somewhat likely to be a Wandering Emperor. In which case we don't want to go for Kodama, can play Spinodrome now. And I think I want to play that before attacking, so they have to minus two instead of trading for a Samurai. Of course they could also have a counter spell, which makes it a little trickier. Okay, Adaptive can attack. And then if they want to exile it with Emperor, that's fine. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Okay. Hope there's no depopulate in our future. Not much of a and then we can maybe get something going with Kodama and Spinoderm hitting the opponents, maybe with a sword as well. A wedding announcements, okay. So they will have a Trump blocker. So now we're more into Kodama instead of Sword. I have got new moves to teach you. Defiler also an option now. But yeah, if we Kodama, just hit the opponents, ignore Emperor, then um, I'll still be able to equip Sword as well now. Yeah, that seems much better. So play Kodama, equip Sword, and then we'll maybe be able to hit an extra land drop with it. Okay, found a land, so two lands total. And now we're in a great spot to potentially get some counters going with Defiler. Emperor makes a Samurai. We must protect the people. Now Spinoderm does lose Hexproof, which is a big deal. But we can play Defiler and Contaminator to add counters to Kodama. Could also move Sword to Kodama. So both can potentially have a profitable attack. Is that better than just playing Contaminator? Now let's get the counters going. And then... Probably fine to attack with both. Let's say they have another Emperor, Exile Spinoderm. They could triple block Kodama to trade for it. That seems fine. Can be an Ertai resurrected. Okay. Kill Spinoderm. We get to draw at least. And a double block. Okay. Still have our swords as a way to potentially generate some card advantage. Emperor makes another Samurai. Wouldn't be surprised if they have another one, and Sword does not protect from it. But Bangbuster was a good draw. So play Bangbuster activates before deciding what to do next. Another Sword. Well, I guess we could equip Contaminator here, attack with both, or I can leave my creatures on defense to Hopefully cast more green permanence with Defiler out, make a bigger board before playing into another Wandering Emperor, and then just play another sword for now. And then if they have an Emperor and they don't want to waste their mana, they wouldn't be able to minus two with it before we get a chance to attack. Okay. Still terrified of a potential farewell, exiling all our artifacts. Opponents making a ton of samurai and a ravine. Okay. That can be a pretty big threat. And dodges all the protection from our sword. The opposite colors. Just need to string together some green permanents. Ooh, Infernal Grasp kills Defiler. That's too bad. It's gonna be tough now. Opponents at 10, but they've got a much bigger board. And at least we'll be able to take out one samurai. Take nine. We're at nine. I'm not sure what top deck we need here. Spinoderm. 
probably not it. If I double equip sword, I could have a an 8-8 trampler, which they can still double block with the samurai. I guess it's worth a shot, as opposed to drawing with Bankbuster. Six mana left. Not sure what we're hoping to achieve with that. They could also even take the damage from Contaminator instead of trading, but then we get to dig with a sword. Okay, opponent will block with everything. So we could kill Rafine if we prefer. And if our opponent attacks with all, let's say we kill 3-3 three, three and Rafine. I guess we're not quite dead on board if we chump, let's say, with a Bankbuster on the Samurai. Although a Spinoderm won't have Trample, which is probably what we need to get a serious attack in. If we let Rafine survive, they get a ton more card selection. So I don't love that idea either. Yeah, tough spot. Maybe we do have to kill the Samurai. Play Spinoderm and pass. So we shouldn't be dead on board unless Rafine has two non-land spells to discard on itself. In which case they would have nine damage exactly. Remember your training. Okay, just Rafine attacking. Discards a wedding announcement, so their hand must be pretty stacked. Okay. So what are we hoping for here? Like a Kodama to give Spinoderm Trample could help. Another Bangbuster, not quite. Adaptive is not going to do it. So I think we're out of options now. Can uh, equip a sword, attack, put on chumps and kills us on the way back, even with her fiend. They can get the job done. So I guess we'll see what's next with the Bankbuster out of curiosity. Bushwhack's not going to do it anymore. So, can play adaptive. Opponent had an interceptor for that as well. Send it back. And then, yeah, it doesn't matter what we play. Could kill an interceptor. But Rafine's still gonna cross the finish line here. Alright, GG's. Sadly, Sword did not line up in this particular matchup. Opponent playing Esper instead of Red or Green. Otherwise, they would have been a lot more useful. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is functional, could pack leader on one, and then if we want to maybe bushwhack, get a forest, play another pack leader on two, turn three Kodama. Although that hand risks to potentially flood out, and we also don't have a four drop to grow the pack leaders yet. So if I don't find something big, the hand could be a bit underwhelming as we won't get any counters going for Kodama. So, close call here. I think given that we're on the draw and we get to see a few more cards, I'm hopeful we can find something to grow pack leader. And at least with early pack leader, we're less likely to get a run over, as we can at least produce some cheap blockers. Put on black-white. Contaminator was a decent draw. Although it still doesn't grow a pack leader. Okay, another Contaminator. So... Yeah, I'm looking at Bushwhack, get a forest, play another pack leader for now. So black-white kind of mid-range could be a tough matchup. Combination of cheap removal and creatures that can win the game by themselves like Shieldred. Also not off to the fastest start. Cards that are good in this matchup. Reckoner Bankbuster. 
harder to hit for the opponents with uh, spot removal. And then Thrun with a bit of built-in protection, Spinoderm as well. So those are the cards we want for now. Attack for two, play Contaminator. And we'll wait on Kodama until we at least get some counters in play first. Contaminator also hit by Fateful Absence. And cross our fingers for no Shieldred. It's gonna be a Sorin instead, also very good, but not quite as backbreaking. It's gonna draw. So if we animate Foundry, we still only have 4 damage on Sorin. We did pick up a Bank Buster, so next turn I could maybe get in with Kodama, getting an extra Forest. And then we can crack a Clue Token as well, if we like. Sure. So we'll just attack Sorin with a Pack Leader here. And then might as well leave up a green mana. Not sure if cracking a clue is better than activating Bankbuster. Maybe activating Bankbuster is better since they may end up killing it with spot removal, whereas the clue token is going to stick around. Opponent keeps plussing with Sorin. Does not want to reveal. Maybe an expensive card. And there's Shieldred at long last. Okay, we'll draw with the Bankbuster. And then now our plan is to overpower the opponent with Defiler, putting counters everywhere. Although if I play it right now, I wouldn't be able to play anything afterwards, so then if they kill it, we didn't really make any progress. But we're also not guaranteed to have the mana to necessarily cast multiple spells next turn. So my best hope may be Defiler, and then hope it survives, and then next turn add counters to the team. Which is not a great plan but it may be the best plan we have right now. Could also try to draw with a few of my clue tokens, hit some more land drops, then try to play Defiler and a few other creatures in the same turn, but right now we don't have any 1-mana creatures or 2-mana creatures even. To make that happen, we would take a lot of damage of Shieldred in the meantime, and then the Phyrexian mana is also going to add up. So, I think this is our only plan right now. Okay, cross our fingers for no answer to Defiler. Soren keeps plussing. Revealing a Wandering Emperor that we can maybe still deal with. And the Dawn Sky. Okay, Defiler survives, but our opponent adds a large flyer to the board. Okay, so we need to make things happen here. We have 5 mana. So the most efficient sequence would be Contaminator and Spinoderm. And then I probably want to crew the Bankbuster too. Could also try and set up Kodama to trample some of our creatures. Which could be reasonable, but maybe we save it for next turn as kind of a surprise. And then a question is whether Bankbuster wants to attack. And if they trade for Shieldred, they may have another one. But that seems fine. Okay. Opponent jumps with Dawn Sky. And we'll see what they get. A Lilian of the Veil. Vale. Not the end of the world. And for once it's not my fault. So Liliana's going to mine us, and we have to decide what to do here. So a question here is, is Contaminator or Pack Leader more valuable than Bankbuster, or do we crew Bankbuster now and sacrifice it? Pack Leader would gain Trample with Kodama, so maybe Contaminator is actually what we get rid of. Doesn't have the same protection as Spinoderm, and the game's probably going to be decided within the next turn or two. Soren reveals a land. Sleeper with Kicker, presumably. Sacrifice a creature, get rid of Pack Leader. And a Bankbuster, so no. Wandering Emperor at least. 
Okay, we'll have to do some math here. Opponent's at 14. They have 5 toughness. Pretty sure we can kill them, especially now with the adaptive as our draw step. I can cast all the creatures in hand and then crew Bangbuster after playing one of those. Could also animate Mishra's Foundry to get an extra attacker. Although I don't think that's quite as good here. So, step one, play Contaminator. Crew Bankbuster. Play Adaptive. And then Kodama. The finishing blow here. Everything gains Trample. And I'll go face. Well over 20 damage. And there we have it. All right, incredibly close game against Black White. And yeah, our plan of uh, Defiler pumping the team worked out. Ponon did not have immediate spot removal. Emperor only works on tapped creatures. So uh, that's one of the drawbacks. Sometimes we can just build up a huge board. So yeah, quite impressed by this mono green Stompy deck. The additions from Phyrexia strengthen the archetype significantly. The adaptive at one mana being the biggest upgrade, but even the Spinoderm, Sword and Thrun also give us some alternate angles of attack that we didn't really have before. And then I'm still happy with Defiler as our curve topper over anything like Nissa or additional copies of Thrun. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.